Times are hard, and they're about to get worse. It's true. It's over. Madonna and Guy getting divorced. It's a big shock. What the hell have I got myself into? Marrying Madonna is one thing, divorcing her is something else altogether. <laughs> could this be the biggest divorce battle we've ever seen? It could well be. Tonight, we answer all the important questions. Like, what was it like being in bed with Madonna? She starts taking off her clothes and stuff in the shots. I'm like, well, she's getting wild. I was interested in showing off and being an exhibitionist. Just how did their marriage work? You'll have to speak to my wife about that. <laughs> she wears the trousers. When Madonna really sets her sights on something, she really gives it her all. And where did it all go wrong? Madonna started doing embarrassing things. It was a pony, by the way. On the 15th of October 2008, the world choked on its cornflakes and cried into its coffee as it was greeted with the news that something truly beautiful was at an end. Today's announcement ends months of speculation that their increasing time apart signalled trouble in the relationship. Well, we've known for a long time that the Madonna and Guy marriage was falling apart. I mean, I've been aware for some time that they hadn't been living together. I, we, we, I mean, the family knew that, so it wasn't... That's why it wasn't that much of a surprise for me to hear that they were getting divorced. Hi. Did you ever get the feeling everything was going wrong? For them, the marriage was a meeting of hearts and minds, two cool creatives who had combined both talent and juices to become the showbiz couple. For us, it was a bit of a laugh, and the celebrity satire of a critically acclaimed mockumentary series soon turned on Madonna and her guy. Guy, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Trago. Kiss a kiss. Oh, I've got something to say. Me too. Will you marry me? I'm pregnant. Of course I when will. When was your last period? But this divorce is no laughing matter. No, this is serious stuff, folks. A battle for multi-million pound properties, an estimated 300 million quid fortune, and most importantly, who gets to keep the Mockney accent? Uh, yeah, he's good as gold. I'm loving it. But is it going to end up all Guy Ritchie style? No one leaves Madonna. An uber-violent piece of TV comedy imagined a lock-stock shoot -em up climax to the showbiz marriage. Hello, Madonna. Bleed neck, what's happening here then? I've only gone and blown Madonna's nut off. You know, I'm sure it mustn't have been easy to be married to her, let alone to divorce her. Could this be the biggest divorce battle we've ever seen? It could well be. <laughs> Back in 1998, when Tony Blair was popular and Googling was just something you let your boyfriend do, Madonna was going through her Earth Mother phase and Guy was the coolest movie director on the planet. He'd been around in the short film music video arena, but then uh, he had a feature film and no one expected it to be very big, no one expected it to actually change the face of British cinema, which it did. Lockstock's fag-stained comic strip take on traditional East End naughty boys was a reflection of Richie's love for all things crass and cockney. Funded by Trudy Styler and starring her husband Sting, here lies the very seed of the Guy and Madge saga. Sting and Trudy Styler threw this amazing dinner and decided that Madonna was single, Guy was single, um, and they were going to put them together. It was the summer of 98 and British cinema's new golden boy was invited to a dinner party round Sting's. Tantric matchmaking produced a right result. Madonna is used to everyone kissing her finely toned ass, and here was a man who really was laid back, English, very charming, and it just took the piss out of her at that dinner. And I think she just thought, my God, here's someone I wasn't expecting to come out of the woodwork. The biggest thing that she requires is somebody who has a mind of their own and a life of their own, and it's not going to get completely lost in her world. Um, those kind of guys are hard to find. I can't imagine, I mean, reading these quotes about Guy Ritchie where, you know, he wasn't bothered about it and she loved the way he was so down to earth and playing it cool. Inside his own head, I'm sorry, he must have been going, oh, what am I 
do it, it's Madonna. You know, because she is the most famous person in the world. Fleet Street was drooling. With a oh, certain big famous <laughs> person. Who would that be then? Brad Pitt, that must be. <laughs> Guy might have played it down, but by the end of 1999, Madge could no longer blame her pot belly on trapped wind. You've got the fact that Guy Ritchie and Madonna were together, and now she's pregnant. I mean, it was extraordinary. She was going to have basically an English bloke's child. In August 2000, Madonna gave birth to their son Rocco and Daddy Guy could hardly contain his joy. It's, it's a big shock because um, until you actually hear the baby screaming, you're, you're never sure whether um, it's all a big joke and she's just got a watermelon stuffed down there or something. Being present at the birth may have been the inspiration for the title of Richie's next film. Guy and Madonna at the time of Snatch were possibly the biggest couple in the world. They were kind of the Brangelina of that time. Madonna is a woman who makes an entrance, and at Inverness today didn't disappoint. In December 2000, the couple flew up to Scotland to get married. Madonna finally got her fairy tale British wedding. A huge castle, a gaggle of A-listers, an entire regiment of Scottish pipers, and a bloke hiding in the church organ. Just a 51-year-old man from the south of England, so he's not a local, was arrested, and we believe that he may have been found in the organ in the church. There were several um, bags taken away, which um, we believe might be um, his own personal waste, shall we stay, say, from uh, being locked in the, in the organ for a couple of days, we think. Everyone wanted to be there, except somebody who actually was, Madonna's little brother. It was very scripted and very unpleasant and very big and um, I don't know, I don't think it was a good beginning, you know. Madonna still owed Christopher some dosh from a decorating job and said she wouldn't pay him unless he showed up. The invitation to the wedding, which wasn't really an invitation, was more of a threat and, you know, being blackmailed into having to go to it, you know, if I wanted to get paid for a job that I had finished. It's not a good way to invite somebody to a wedding. Still, you got a free holiday in Scotland, yeah? I was there four days, and basically spent four of those four days by myself because the women went and did their thing and the guys went off and shot animals, which is what they do, I guess. But what about the company? A bunch of his buddies who were, you know, decent guys, but, you know, they were you know, just a lot like him in a lot of ways, kind of pretending to be something that they weren't and, you know, and having to sit through dinner after dinner and listen to really bad gay jokes. OK, but at least you got to give a speech, which was nice. Something along the lines, I'd like to toast the happiest moment that happens only twice in a person's lifetime. And if anyone wants to fuck Guy, he'll be in my room. And then sat down. And everyone laughed, you know, and... Uh, I thought, that was, okay, that was funny, you know, but she wasn't laughing, and Guy wasn't laughing, and all I could hear was, what does he mean by that? <laughs> Christopher's glowing report is the only record the world has of the wedding of the century. Because all their guests, for the most part, were basically family members or A-list friends, um, nobody really talked about it. So it was very disappointing we didn't get to see anything inside until, of course, very recently, when we did get to see those pictures. And here they are. Good, aren't they? Two and a half years after meeting, Guy Ritchie and Madonna had married in Scotland in the biggest event to happen north of the border since they legalised Woad. But despite appearing to be the ultimate celebrity couple, people were already questioning the basis of their union. If you think about it, they're not really that compatible. You can't really see why they were attracted to each other. In terms of a love affair, obviously from a business point of view, they, they were great together. It did look obvious from the start that Guy was going to get a lot more fame and notoriety out of this marriage than what Madonna ever, you know, she didn't really need anything from it. The things she would be doing, you know, for publicity, when it was helping him out with publicity with his films, you thought, my God, it's so out of character, Madonna. You know, she turned up in that tight T-shirt with snatch on the front. I mean, the whole thing was so cringy, and you think, oh, God, you know, are they really taking the piss here? One man who knows the difference between a piss and pots you have to get off to um, piss in is PR guru Max 